Hey everybody, welcome back to another land place of Binding of Isaac with Plus. How do we feel? How do you feel, Tomo? Ruka? I feel calm. I feel cool. And I feel collected. The three C's of Isaac. Right off the bat, I forgot what the heck this weird item does. And because of the fact that it showed up... Uh, it's Eucharist, right? I was gonna say, because of the fact that it showed up as our Eden start, I can't get its name <laughs> and that's true but uh still it's a good start terrible damage but re you know i've come to the realization i think in my uh advanced isaac long in the tooth sort of mental age give me an above average rate of fire over above average damage i'm sorry like if, if you feel differently that's cool dude we're all entitled to feel however we choose to feel in this situation but I just, I think I've come to the opinion I would rather have a coconut gun that shoots in spurts. And if it hits, it's gonna hurt. So I'm gonna avoid that for now. I think if we avoid it, there's a realistic chance we could actually get 2 HP right off the bat. Well, not off the bat, but on the first floor. Is this XL? I'm looking at it, I'm like, dude, look at the size of that corridor. This is like we bought a, a basement that's in the Flatiron building. It's long and skinny. Much like a straw. And I definitely was not going to say anything else right there. Yo, if we get a bomb, there's basically... It's not an HP upgrade, because we're, we're going to be on an even number. But we can get a battery charge. Yo, I don't want to be here. You oh. I shot in the wrong direction once and it screwed us. We can get a battery charge and whatever we would get out of the Tinted Rock to begin with. Please don't split into other enemies when you... Oh. It is the fight that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on. My one, two, three, some people started singing it not knowing what it was. Ooh, ah, they continue singing it forever just to... Ah, ah, ah. Okay, now, we, now that we've done that and entertained ourselves, um, let's go back. Yo, yo, bro, where's my battery charge? Did I literally just walk right by it? Heck yeah, I did, brother. So, um, we are going to go back this way, because I feel like one of the special rooms is probably over here now. And if only we had walked down, this run would have started a little different. I'm not actually, like, upset with how this run is going. I'm actually very, very pleased indeed. Interesting. I, I said very pleased, not very close veins. I have to use my, my brain here, okay? Now that we have a bomb, would I rather blow up that machine or have... I, I really, really don't see us getting another battery charge. Like getting three more rooms of combat. But we could. So I think we do get the Tinted Rock plus Battery Charge, and we spend our money instead, hoping to reroll that, and the reroll was BEA. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, do we use the bomb right away on the Tinted Rock? Here's the thing. If we only had a, a Tinted Rock, we would blow it up right away. So the existence of the Battery Charge shouldn't make us think that it's not worth blowing up. Like, that's just incredibly dumb. What we do hope is that there's two rooms of combat prior to the boss fight, and then we can get one free HP out of it. We might get lucky. And, you know, there's a little bit of calm, cool, collected going on here, a little bit of smart play. But also, you know, we, the run is being pretty generous with, uh, you know, the resources it's given us here, and I'm very thankful for that. Money, a little tight, obviously, but piercing shots plus, uh, you know, five keys. Plus, dude, this is a huge floor. <laughs> By first floor standards, this is a redonkulous floor. We're gonna get three HP. Plus whatever we get from our boss. And Eucharist, I'm trying to remember, it's a it's goat head for angel deals. Is that correct? I'm looking at my percentages, and that, that definitely appears to be correct. So that's cool. Um full stop. We might prefer one deal with the devil. You know, just so that we can uh, 
pick up some much needed damage. But we could get that damage on a deal with the Angel as well. It's just rarer. Just a, give me a Larry Jr. or a pin. That's all I ask. A short fight for a long floor. Okay, well. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good. It's, you know, 7.30 p.m. here. Last few episodes of the day. How many I do basically depends on, uh, well, to some extent, how well they go. Basically, it's a nice night. We've been so busy, like, uh, with my parents being here. Not busy with, like, work. I mean, always a little bit, at least. But busy with, like, real-life leisure stuff. Um, tonight's, like, the first night. I'm gonna be done work relatively early. You know what I'm gonna do? Here's how you know your boy's Game of the Year list is not paid for by a bribe. I'm gonna play some Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm loving that game. My life right now, please don't lose this eternal heart. Well, my my gaming life is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and high level ascension runs. Off camera. Off uh, high level ascension runs and slay the spire, just in case you're like, I don't know what game that is. On camera. Playing a bunch of stuff, including Return of the Obra Dinn, which is a fantastic No! I should have should have kept ducking and weaving, but whatever. Um, still, where was I going with this? I am I'm in love with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's the most I've enjoyed a Smash probably since Brawl, maybe since '64. Don't at me. I didn't play Melee. That train has sailed. Okay. I think Nintendo has done a fantastic job. They've warmed this. Old and cold heart. So, wait, are we going to see a deal with the devil? No, right? It's just going to be a deal with the angel? It's weird, and it's kind of a strange edge case, right? Because there's no way you could ever start with Eucharist. Except in as an Eden run, or a run in which you get Eden's blessing. Uh, on the run previous, I guess I should say. Otherwise, the only time you could ever get Eucharist is if you've already facilitated the existence of an angel deal on which you got Eucharist. I guess, now that I think about it, you could get an extremely early chaos and then pick it up in any place where you could otherwise get an item. But it's like, like, come on. That's a little rare. <laughs> We're dealing with an edge case in that situation. Okay, definitely don't get hit here. I don't know if it's Goathead. It might just guarantee you deals with the angel. So, as of right now, we definitely... If we pick up a damage upgrade, we're good for two more floors. All we need is a modest damage upgrade, and I won't complain for a couple of floors. This run's got a great future ahead of it as of right now. No complaints. It's been a good day. I, I you know, it's the same day as earlier. I worked out, dropped my car off to get some winter tires on it, because we're going up to the mountains this weekend. I bought my car winter tires before I bought myself winter shoes. Now that I think about it, it's a little bit silly. It's like, a, why don't we park on driveways, but drive on parkways? Oh, well, historically, uh, no, it's, it's a joke is the thing. All right, so we're probably going to lose our HP to get a key piece. Is that worth it? No, like, by, by every appreciable measure, there's no way it could be worth it. Lose HP... Well, okay, I guess if you get five cents out of it, maybe. Um, but losing HP to get one half of the tool you need to fight an optional boss. Wow, we are on true galaxy brain levels right now. At least it's the harder angel. Don't take any more damage. I thought about it, like maybe we can get enough to get something from the shop, but not like this. Don't take any more damage on purpose, at least. Yeah, so I'm going to need you to really speed up the delivery of this uh, DPS upgrade. Guardian Spear? Not really what I'm looking for. I hate this item. I actually do not like Guardian Spear at all. If I get it for free, okay, you know, life goes on. But otherwise, um, it, it's just because it's misleading. Like the tip of the sphere, uh, spear, I should say, does no damage. It's only, like, the... I think it might be the white mark on the spear that actually does the damage. By the way, this is the other good thing, or perhaps, like, quietly good thing about, uh... Prayer card. 
Your boy's a dummy. Took damage. Lost his eternal heart. But it doesn't matter. Yo, this is interesting. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Because as long as we didn't lose it in a situation where we could have had like a bunch more plays, it's still going to be an HP upgrade for us. I guess we could have bought the battery charge in there and gotten some more. But we're going to be at 6 HP. What we really need is a, a way to replenish them. So we're moving on. 2.52 damage is starting to border on comical. Um, but we do have piercing shots, so it's not as bad as it looks. It's not as good as you might think, but it's, it's not as bad as it looks on paper. Maybe not as good as it looks on the screen. One thing's for sure, we're very happy to be fighting weak enemies whenever possible. I don't think I'd... Let's take it. The only thing I was worried about, honestly, was a tears downgrade. You can't uh, kill that which is already dead, i.e. my damage. So I'm not sweating that at all. We actually shouldn't sweat this run at all, because it's in the, you know, a little bit of an origin story. We're pretty weak right now. But simultaneously... Help. Um, but simultaneously... We're going to get deals with the Angel. I'd like to knock out the key pieces early. If, if we can't, we can't. But, you know, we have to make a, a sober and honest uh, kind of impression of how our damage looks when we get to those Angel rooms in order to make it happen. I, uh, I'm sorry if it might seem distracted. A question has been bothering me all day. Why doesn't Bilbo give the one ring of power to Samwise Gamgee instead of Frodo Baggins? Okay? It's been bothering me. Frodo, you know, I got nothing against him at all. I think my dude is making the best of a bad situation, all right? But Bilbo is aware that when he gives the ring, or I don't remember now. It's been a while. Does he give the rings to does he give the ring to Gandalf and Gandalf entrusted to Frodo? Either way, why not just entrust it to Sam? I'm not trying to suggest, because I've read all of the books as well as having uh, seen all of the movies, but it has been forever since I've seen the movies. Sam is, and everybody knows, it's not like a pet theory. Papula duplex is kind of interesting, at least in terms of, I guess, making our shots larger. Sam is kind of the hero of... Uh, the Lord of the Rings saga. You know, no spoilers, but he basically gets what needs to be done, done. And for the most part, Frodo is just there for company. Frodo's the guy who's like, I'm not going to help you move, but like you can FaceTime me while you're lifting boxes. Oh, and throughout the whole movie, <coughs> they're talking about, oh, hobbits, you bow for no one. You're the most noble out of all of us. For the most part, Frodo, and again, I'm not besmirching his efforts, is just hanging out. And I guess, like, his incredible power is, is willpower. Like, he doesn't put on the ring very often. Even Samwise Gamgee is tempted modestly by the, by the power of the one ring. I don't know, man. It just seems like the Fellowship would have done a lot better if they had just entrusted the ring to Sam. And then when Frodo was like, please... I'm tired. Sam could be like, just wait here, Mr. Frodo. I'll carry the ring up to Mount Doom and throw it in myself. By the way, don't trust that weird golem, dude. You know, like, the thing is, that's maybe the other part that bothers me slightly about Lord of the Rings. Why did they need Gollum to help them find the way to Mordor? Don't you literally just, like, have they never looked at the map in the front of the book? You just walk in one direction until you see like that hell incarnate basically sorry i was trying to get around google deep mind there he double hockey sticks you see two towers one of which has a flaming eyeball on the top isn't that good enough thankfully some damage I actually think we will go for Little Delirium over Nun's Habit. We're going to hit a level where we have enough HP, if we haven't hit it already. Um, little Delirium is at least potentially some extra damage. 
I'm not a plot hole sort of guy. Those movies are still masterpieces. The Hobbit, eh, not so much. I'm just throwing it out there. I think that the Fellowship could have handled it a little bit better. Now, they couldn't ride, uh, just fly the eagles in the Mordor, okay? Because the Nazgul were there to hunt them. That's their job, okay? And they can also fly. And then beyond that, why is it the eagles' responsibility to make sure that the ring gets cast in the Mount Doom? You know, we've all, uh, there's problems in the real world right now that probably seem cataclysmic for some people and other people hold the, the tools to solve them easily you know and the you don't go oh you're having trouble doing your java assignment why don't you just get james gosling to do it for you because he's got his own problems okay the realm of eagles and the realm of uh, men are two different realms that exist on a different plane one is slightly more vertical than the other anyway that's so that's what i've been thinking about like a lot lately yeah i want the speed upgrade i don't care so much about the uh, hp at this point we have if too much and uh you know I, the, the easiest way to win this run at this point might just be to pick up a uh, bloody penny or something along those lines you know gimpy little chub or sorry little chad something that can actually uh you know reliably give us red hearts in return for the red hearts we already have another way to do it would be to get you know i'm not trying to be uh, you know needlessly complaining but a little bit more damage especially with this nice rate of fire and piercing shots so it would help out a great deal i'm hopeful you know I don't, I don't even know by the way if we need spirit hearts to protect our red hearts and ensure that we get deals with the angel but my thinking right now is it's not gonna be hard to get to 12 hp why not try to keep ourselves you know spirit heart rich just in case that does make a difference that was pretty lucky i'll take both of these i really think we're in kind of a position we have to uh we have to become more than the sum of our parts Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So, you know, the more parts we have, the greater the sum is. And then if we become more than the sum, dude, that's, like, even better. That's probably not how that analogy is supposed to work. That's okay. We've had a lot of interesting runs here as, as we've been working towards uh, the streak, you know? A couple of them have been a little bit uh, questionable, yet here we are still. This one I would describe as, you know, well within that camp. This would be a very, very good floor for us to pick up a real DPS upgrade. And my dudes, I do not care if it's, uh, you know, from the boss, from the angel deal. I will take what I can get. That's HP. You know, it's interesting, isn't it? I think we take duality. And then I believe we could actually pivot from angel deals into devil deals starting on this floor. I think we maybe got lucky to get a demon heart there. Um, and, dude, this is the perfect time to get some freaking devil deals. We have 10 HP. No, yeah, we have 10 HP. Going very, very, very slowly. Very far behind schedule. Oh, I call it like I see it when it comes to Isaac, okay? If I got a great run, I'm not going to tell you, oh boy, I hope we don't fight a hard boss. Anything could happen. You know, if I, it, it, sometimes we have a great run and I almost squander it. I'll be the first to tell you. You know, that I, I'm really screwing this one up. I'm a 30-year-old YouTuber. If I don't speak frankly, what does that say about my personality, you know? We've grown up together. That was just a terrible bit of damage right there. Um, yeah, just step on the spikes. Hey, that was just me testing whether or not um, we would uh, lose our angel deals. And we didn't, so haha. -ha. Joke's on you. I was only pretending to be stupid. No. Please. 
Okay, Leech is actually kind of part of the win con that we were suggesting. You know? To be able to just get HP. I think we're okay here. I mean, if you want to dissect any movie, I guess you could dissect any movie like that. You know what movie organization is not above reproach? The Galactic Empire. It makes no sense to me. And, uh, you know, I mean, maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? And if you put it in other terms, you could rationalize them. But if the rebels, you know, destroyed your Death Star, the most impressive fortress ever made, you're really just going to go back and make another one right away? I guess if you've... It, do they... It's been a little while since I've seen Return of the Jedi. Did I call it Returned? <laughs> to be fair. I don't like Return of the Jedi that much. But, do they have a like a line in the movie where they go like, Hey, Palpatine, did you, you, you saw the new plans where they painted over the exhaust port, right? Yes. Surely now the Death Star is unbeatable. They must have done something along those lines. And then, you know, to basically do the exact... It, you know, and I'll be the first to tell you, I don't want to get into a... a issue as contentious as the modern Star Wars sequels. I liked The Force Awakens, uh, and I liked uh, The Last Jedi as well. I just wish that uh, Jeff Buckley were still alive so that he could have done the theme song. This is The Last Jedi. Hate to see the force between us. Hey, you get the, it's, a, it's a weird intersect, uh, intersectional joke, you know. It's not really gonna... It's not gonna hit everybody, but the people that it does hit is gonna tickle them. Tickle them pink, like Mace Windu's lightsaber. That, I just got the color wrong to annoy you, I promise. But, like, if there's one complaint, I really, really, really hope that J.J. Abrams doesn't bring back any form of Death Star in the third movie. Because, like, I get it, you know? In the, in the Force Awakens... You know, he's taken over a franchise. He doesn't nec. J.J. Abrams, you know, don't take this the wrong way. I don't necessarily think he's the developer you, you hire if you want your movie to make bold choices. I think he's, he's specced into style, okay? And that's fine, too. Oh, we want to deal with the devil. Oh, we have chaos. We want to deal with the angel. No! Okay, um, I still think we want both. I'm an idiot. Anyway. I just hope that it was, you know, like movie one is like, hey, it's a de triangular Death Star this time instead of a spherical one. And then, like, Ryan Johnson is like, what if sci-fi was art? And then J.J. Abrams is like, you know what? They're good. Star Killer Base 3.0. Please, J.J. You don't have... It's, it's beneath you. You could do better. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a weird franchise. Has any, you know, media franchise suffered over the... Like, has any media franchise over the last five years suffered more in public perception than Star Wars? It went from, hey, J.J. Abrams is making some new Star Wars movies. Wow, that's awesome. To, like, you know, at this point, people are like... I don't want to see Star Wars anymore. Not just because of the Ryan Johnson thing, but you just made too many. Solo, Rogue One. There's been four Star Wars movies since 2013. Since 2015. No, since 2014. And I'm not even talking about any of the Clone Wars shenanigans. Now, there's been a bunch of Marvel stuff. I'll, I'll admit, you know, sometimes you get Marvel fatigue. I've been enjoying the Marvel break. Thank you for the damage upgrade, by the way. Um, but at least, don't at me, the Marvel movies, by and large, have been good to great. Now, I also, you know, if it, can I talk about superhero movies for two minutes? I know I, I talk about them more often than maybe you would like, but I also watched an animated film, Porco Rosso. So you know what? I'm meeting you nerds halfway about your nerdness. You meet me halfway about my nerdness, okay? I'm not even talking about superhero movies necessarily. Just like, you know, the Marvel movies, 
They're not high art, you know? They're not Bo Burnham's 8th grade. They're not Annihilation. You know, they, they don't really make you think, except, you know, Oh, I hope the bad guy loses. But still, you know, they're, they're, they're well-crafted, remarkably consistent films. I mean, when was the last time a very disliked... I want to see how this works. Marvel movie. Or not even very, but what, when was the last time a consensus bad uh, Marvel movie came out? The literal answer is probably, like, Thor 2. That came out, like, six years ago or something. Everything else, most people go, like, you know, it's all right. It's just a little bit boring. The worst recent Marvel movie is Ant-Man 2, in my opinion. But even when Kate and I were in the movie theater and we saw um, Bumblebee... Yo, I'm rerolling. Absolutely. We have nine lives. We're one item away from becoming Guppy, or we're Guppy. I think this is a good reroll. Um, when Kate and I were in the theater and we saw Bumblebee, but I know disrespect meant to Bumblebee, by the way, in the same way that Star Wars has suffered over the past few years. Uh, Transformers, thanks to Bumblebee, is a franchise that people are kind of like a little bit excited about again, especially the first 10 minutes don't at me. Anyway. But uh, where was I going with this? After we saw Bumblebee, that's right. I was like, and we both had this, came to this realization independently, but we were both like, it was decent, but it really, re, you know, puts it into perspective that for, the, you know, big budget action movies that are basically superhero movies, man, Marvel's just like leagues ahead of whatever the heck they're doing at Michael Bay's productions right now. We have explosion immunity. No, we don't. We have occasional explosion. We have a big circle coming out of our head. I don't know. This is weird. We still have terrible damage, actually. We, oh, we have Holy Mantle Guillotine, though. Obviously, take the Polaroid. Holy Mantle Guillotine is really good. Hopefully, we can get, you know, one more Guppy item. With nine lives, we should be basically unkillable. Just give me that last Guppy item. Fulfill your destiny. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this whole... There's no end point to this bit. I'm just spinning my wheels. And that's okay, you know. Sometimes, you know, just want to shoot the S, you know. Shoot the breeze. That's what I was going to say. Shoot the breeze. It, and, you know... I know it's a red letter media joke, but it was also true before red letter media, okay? Is January at the multiplex. You know what that means? This is not sarcasm. In January, the best thing to see at the movie theater is Oscar contenders that didn't get a lot of play in December, but now that they're nominated for Oscars, which actually has not happened yet, but you know what's coming. Um, once they get nominated, you know, they're going to make their way to all the multiplexes. That's what you should see in January. It's either that or Escape Room, which I heard was surprisingly not awful. But anytime there's a January horror movie, you should know. Like, there's a good chance that that is... It, there's, like, consumer trends in the industry, you know? And in January, people tend to not be going out so much because they're all like, Ugh, just let me stay inside. You know, I've been out too much over the past month, spent too much money, don't want to go to the movies, etc., etc. So the studios are like, mm, should we release the new Avengers here? Well, I mean, you could. And some, you know, there, there used to be months that were dead, and then it's like industry news when uh, a studio goes, you know what, screw it. We're coming out with a big budget movie in March. But it's not the norm. Where am I going with this? I don't know. I like going to the movies, but there's not much opportunity. <laughs> Through the first couple of months of the year. What were my favorite movies of 2018? Um, Does Porco Rosso count? Probably not, huh? I'm trying to farm up some, red, or some demon hearts here. 
I still think that, you know, at the end of the day, I, I haven't seen all the stuff I should see, you know? But probably my favorite movie of the year is Hereditary. Not just a horror movie, but a horror movie that stuck with me, which doesn't happen all the time, you know? And it didn't stick with me because of, like, you know, uh, mature themes or anything like that, but it stuck with me. I was like, you know what? That's a really original movie. It reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, It Follows. A lot of people think it's a very stupid concept, and that's okay. And a movie doesn't always have to skate by on concept alone. But most horror movies' concepts are like, there's a there's a monster. Or there there's a guy and he's got a knife and he can't be stopped. He's a real bad man. You know, so like, so anything that throws a little bit of... A little bit of different differentiation in there has got me interested at least. And you're going to say, NL, did you see Suspiria? Yeah, I saw Suspiria. Uh, back in the year 2008. That's right. I watched the original Dario Argento film. I have not seen the new one yet. But I, I heard less positive things than expected, but still positive things. So I would like to see it. Suspiria, uh, the original, is a fine... Well, it's not fine. It's good. But flawed movie. Yo, okay. Dude, I'm not going to the void. You gotta be out of your mind. We're actually relatively lucky to be where we are on this run. I, I really expected our reroll would take us, but not so much. What the heck? Ruka, you punched through your box. What are you doing? My man. Oh, he swiped his tail at me. Ruka, you're too big for your box. I mean, it is a cardboard box that my man's has been sitting in for like, I don't know, close to five years, but like, and we've sealed it up a couple, we'll seal it up again. Don't worry, but, but buddy, don't, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you out. Don't aggravate her, okay? Like, don't stick your head through the crack in the box. Here, here, here. Hey, get out. Go, 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 go. Who, <laughs> Oh, you're heavy. Okay. The, my son, don't go back in the box. No. I will put you back in the box. When, okay, he's going back in the box. You know what? Fine. Break your box. See if I care. I'm just looking out for you. I mean, the box is already broken. I'm just... You know, he's going to be biting at the, the seam that he created. It's going to make it tougher to seal back up. Can we get an F in chat for Ruka's box, please? I wonder if, like, the box for him is like a security blanket. So he's like, I don't care if I ripped it. I'm going back. Maybe he thinks we're going to throw it out. I would never, my man. But just please. Don't put any more pressure on it. The tear is going to be untenable. I mean, we're just, it's a mathematical run at this point, and that's not meant as a compliment. Um, basically, oh, Explosivo. Because of, uh, because of Holy Mantle, plus, uh, I mean, I think we also have, um, the virus? Yeah, it must be the virus. We can just, especially, like, apparently our luck stat has been doing work in overtime for us, um, but we basically can just run into enemies and stay above maintenance on HP. I know Tomo, he broke the box. I'll fix it, but, like, I just don't see why you gotta be a jerk about it. And, dude, right, immediately, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this is an incredible array of items for us. Yeah. That's really solid. And we're going to finish this run off and be feeling pretty, pretty good. I'm not particularly proud of this run, but I'm not like... I mean, we we did a lot with a little. I, I don't think we salvaged a, a victory out of defeat. But what we did do is uh, not let 2.x damage get us down. I'm... Very surprised I couldn't get any demon hearts out of that. Maybe I didn't poison any of the lowest level. 
Yo, our damage is out of control. When we get peak damage bonus, it's over, dude. This guy gave me a demon heart. You're dead, my man. It's over. Yeah, I mean, I'll never say that we, like, made nothing out of something, but we made a lot out of a little on this run. Our DPS was pretty trash for a while. Rate of fire was good, but it was a solid reroll. And really, the chest items have made this so much better. Any streak run where you fight Mega Satan, chef's kiss. No, I will not do Delirium. Are you insane? Hey, thanks for watching. We're up to 33 wins for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I'll see you the video. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.